Hey Cheryl, again. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start on a new drawing today. Uh, well, a new painting. I have the drawing done. So, uh, I guess let's get started. But today I'm gonna work on this drawing that I did um, in winter scene. The cabin, little deer here. Uh, and I've already got some of my paints out that I'm gonna use in it. Uh, so, all right, well, I guess I will get started. And drawing every time, I mean, I will have the drawing done because it just saves time. Uh, I'll do that now. Let's see what it looks like here. Maybe a room here. All right, I'm going to start with the sky now. This is a early morning, I guess, to be. And I have to get my water. So, do a lot of editing in this one, huh? I've got to go get water. Okay, edit that part out. I don't want that in there. Okay, I've got these. I was I used this morning, or used a few minutes ago. I have to clean them real quick. Okay, I'm going to dry these brushes here. I've got to find a brush that I need to start with the sky. I need to use a filbert brush. Works better for me. That one. No, that one is. I know you're not supposed to soak your brushes. It's very bad for that. It messes them up. So don't ever soak your brushes. You put your brushes in there, you can leave them in there a minute or so, but that's, I would take them out because they lose their shape and it eats away at them. I don't think that would be good by any means. This one's got something on it though, so I really need to soak it. This one, I think it's good to go. And if it's not, maybe I've got to soak this one too. I found them. Oh. Well, the one I cleaned, I used this morning. This one, these two I found. I guess I didn't clean them last time I was doing it. So we're just going to have to soak them. Okay. Now, I'm going to try to find a velvet brush. Yeah, this will work good. Okay. Yeah. I usually put, uh, um, where's that? Just here. I used a uh, titanium white, a cobalt blue, and a light pink, and I used uh, a brilliant red, earth brown, and black, and the yellow here, I used uh, a deep yellow, it's a deep yellow, so all right, now this is just so. I usually would, but it's a little runnier though than. That's why I don't want to put it here, just run down like that black is. That black is thinner than that white, but it's an older black too, so. This is just so. I like to put this down on the drawing. Kind of helps your paint run smooth when you're painting. Use a bigger brush for the back. Everything takes time. Let's see, I got brushes up there, but I don't think. Let's see. Let's get some water here. still a lot on here. I just didn't need to put that much. I usually do a lighter drawing, so I'll have to do some really good covering up. But the sky, I want to put white, the 
uh, white gesso down. Get it on my draft table here. But get all this in the, in there. And I'm just going to do the gesso cover on the sky part right now and work it down as I go. to keep it wet so when you put on the regular paints colors it, it, it glides smoother and it's not so dry and brushy dry brushy all right I think I got it let me go back this way said make sure you rinse them out right away because you don't want the paint the water to ruin your brushes because it will it will eat at the wood it will eat at your brushes it'll not make them work the way you want them to get ruined yeah. I made this little paintbrush holder here out of some and this black thing I bought, I put a top on it. I had to rubber band it down to keep it, but it's it works really good. Okay, now it's time. Um, I guess I could do like a light sky here. Boy, that white is just like I said, yeah. I don't want a real dark. I'm going to get a little bit more white there. I want a casual blue sky. And then I can change it up if I want to darken here or there at clouds. Make it a little darker. And Frank says, yeah. It's more of a sky color. Got some birds up there I'm going to put in. A couple of the birds, ducks, or something. A couple of birds. I see birds. I may have to put more of that out if I run out, which I added water so it'll smooth, it'll spread, and the acrylic gesso really helps to push that quite a distance. Sometimes I feel like I'm using the wrong brush because it's such an area to cover. It don't seem like it until you're doing it. But it's dark. Even. Okay, I'll bring it over here. It's not really that dark. It's okay. But I wanted a natural blue. I didn't want something way off the wall. So you can still see the trees coming through. So, and then I gotta follow all those brush strokes with my trees. Actually, I don't have to follow them that much because the distant ones will be natural, faded in the distance. The ones up front, however, I have to do. I'm gonna put a little dark here and there. Let's see that. 
kidding. Bermuda. Crisscross strokes, crisscross strokes, like so. It's the way I was taught by many great artists. Uh, hours and hours of watching videos. And I self-taught my, I self-taught uh, my drawing. I do my drawing self-taught. Uh, actually, well, I went to art school in Minneapolis, Minnesota to do it. But I knew what I was doing. I've drawn since grade school. I did a semi for my dad when I was a kid. Somebody wanted a semi. He worked, my dad worked for Yellow Freight for 26 years. And uh, a guy wanted a semi drawn, and he said his daughter was a draw, drew at home, and he wanted to know if I could do it. And he brought it home to me a big old catalog. Uh, so I sat there at the table, and I drew a semi, and well, I was probably 12. And you wouldn't think it'd be worth a darn. Well, there's a lot of great artists though at 12. But I was about 12. My dad worked for Yellow Freight. And he brought this catalog home for me. The guy at work wanted him to see if I could draw a semi for him. Just a sketch semi. And I did. Trailer, everything from final cab to trailer, end of the trailer, whatever. And he took it to work when it was done, and the guy paid him $150 for it. He really liked it. So that that inspired me to keep doing what I was doing. And that was my first, I guess, money that I made. I don't know if I got the money or Dad got the money. I don't really remember, but the first time I made anything off my artwork. Mm -hmm. And I made a dog book. I created a dog book. It was, um, I drew all different kinds of dogs. And my, I would say dog food bag, pictures of dogs, you cut the dog, dogs out off the dog food bags, the cans, magazines, newspaper, whatever. And I would, all them dogs, and then I would write about what they did, working dogs, and toy dogs, and, and uh, it was a really good book, I even binded it, and, and uh, I don't know what happened to that book, I left it at home I guess, and I never saw it again, after I moved out, just never saw it again. Oh, I don't know. Let's see, I'm not down here. It's a hair. Now, if you get a hair on your painting, don't freak out. It will come out. And sometimes they dry in your painting. Sometimes you can get them out after they dry. Like I said, don't freak out because some of the greatest artists have hairs in their paintings. Or have hairs in their paintings, and that's okay. Here, gotta make sure I get enough of the sky. I used too small of a brush, I think. Shouldn't have took this long, but okay. Let's go shut the TV off. Right? Okay. There we go.
Alright, anyway, okay, well, that's my bunch. Now, um, some of these. Everybody has their own way of doing this stuff, so, uh, yeah. I want the dark to look as real as I can and three-dimensional. So, and I don't like hurrying through stuff. See, that's got to be, it's going to have the light source coming this way. Okay, well, I'm working on the trees and it takes time. I'm going to put the distant brush in the background and uh, put the brighter stuff up front. So. I guess this ends this uh, week's video. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.